Yes, so here I am running through the new expanded Lost River map. The very rough, very much not final, as you can tell by this tree growing out of the road. Not final expanded Lost River map. I have been chipping away on this map for way over a year. But finally this week, I've been working on a separate project to keep to have a real kind of open sandbox. I could throw stuff in there, mess around, it wouldn't affect the main project. Finally this week, cleaned it up, stripped it down, brought it into the main Wolfcrest project. So now I can finally have wolves running around in the new map. And other things, like these rocks, these boulders floating up in the sky. That's a, just a carryover from Slough Creek. Those are these Slough Creek boulders. They have not been told about the new Lost River map topography and so they're up in the sky they're not ufos they're just boulders who haven't found their way down to the ground yet so this is coming along got a lot of work left to do um, from the trees growing out of the ground to a lot of refinements to vegetation to lots and lots and lots of details and fine refinements to make throughout the whole map um, but it's exciting to get it integrated into the game I was testing something the other day and I looked away for a few minutes and looked back and there's a moose just <laughs> beating the heck out of my wolf. Gave me a couple injuries. So the game is running in Lost River. And here we are up at the, the fire tower overlooking uh, downtown, which I'm not going to show you today. But you can see other things that we need to do, like there's no uh, environment surrounding the playable map. There's no collider on this rock that I just ran onto. There's a lot of, lot of things that need to be done. There's a, probably about a thousand and a half things that need to be done. So a lot of things that need work. Uh, let's take a quick look at one of those. With the terrain, unlike the Yellowstone maps, this is uh, not a real place. So there are no real satellite photographs showing ground cover and, and vegetation like we used for the Yellowstone maps. So I've had to use algorithms to um, paint the terrain with different ground textures. Showed that a couple months ago in a video. And now that it's uh, time to place the trees, I want to do the same kind of thing. So as you can see, the trees right now are just covering, not the entire landscape, because it is based on ground cover, vegetation on the ground. But still, this is just a blanket of trees covering the entire thing. And we want something a little more interesting and a little more natural looking. Because trees have reasons for growing or not growing in any particular place based on soil type and soil quality and water flow and all that kind of thing. So we want to kind of recreate that look here. So what we can do here is kind of cool with uh, this uh, Vegetation Studio Pro tool. We can use some rules and some and some Perlin noise patterns to control where the trees grow. So right now this rule is in effect but it's almost minimal. So I'm going to increase it to about uh, 30%. Still don't see much. You, now you just see it thinning things out but where things get interesting now is if I adjust the scale of this noise pattern and suddenly you see see this pattern in the trees where they grow and where they don't grow and so it's really cool you can create these clusters and kind of running lines and grassy areas so I want to have a good amount of tree cover and a good amount of clustering of trees once I get a pattern like this I can adjust uh, kind of the th sensitivity of the trees to that pattern. And so like here they're not sensitive at all, and here they're extremely sensitive. <laughs> they're somewhere in the middle. Um, and again, this is uh, out in the Mountain West, so it's drier than in the you know Pacific Northwest or in Eastern forests in the US. And so we wanna have definitely some areas with, with good tree cover, but we also wanna have some nice open grasslands where you'd rather chase those elk anyways. So this is a good overview of the map, but it's also important to get down to, to eye level and see what these patterns look like at the ground from the, where the player's perspective will actually be. Ignore the white trees, that's just a quirk of the snow shader on the trees. So trying some different settings, yeah, a lot of these look pretty good. Um, so you just keep kind of fussing and tweaking with it and uh, see what you like and then come back a couple days later and take another look at it from different perspectives and, and you gradually, inch by inch, work your way toward the final result. So lots more to do on this before it's ready for release. This is my main focus now. The rest of the team is working on the saga and uh, related refactorings and improvements that tie into that. So there's lots more still to come for Wolf Quest Anniversary Edition.